نحمده ونسلي ونسلم على سيدنا ونبينا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا ومولانا محمد صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم ورسوله النبي الأمين المكين الحنين الكريم الرؤوف الرحيم أما بعد فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال الله تعالى في شأن حبيبه إن الله وملائكته يسلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا سلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما تحب وترضى بأن تصلي عليه بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ظهر الفساد في البر والبحر بما كسبت أيدي الناس ليذيقهم بعد الذي عملوا لعلهم يرجعون وقال تعالى ولا تفسدوا في الأرض بعد إصلاحها ودعوه خوفا وطمعا إن رحمة الله قريب من المحسنين صدق الله العظيم وبلغنا رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك لمن الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين Most respected علماء My respected elders, brothers and sisters in Islam Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh Two weeks ago we had commenced with a theme of corruption in the Ummah, trials and tribulations in the Ummah. And for the past two weeks we discussed it on two levels. One being in relation, corruption in relation to the Holy Quran. The second being corruption in relation to the Holy Prophet wasalam. And today's discussion is going to be corruption in terms of the Ummah. And I was going to try to complete it over one session. But I thought I would break it over two sessions. Reason being that the Holy Prophet ﷺ classified corruption in the Ummah on two levels. One would be general corruption in his Ummah, and the second would be corruption in his Ummah with particular reference to the final days. So instead of me covering both of them in one discussion, the second discussion, corruption of the Ummah in the final days, warrants its own discussion. So I will discuss general corruption in Ummah this week, inshallah ta'ala, and next week we will compete with corruption in the Ummah, particularly in the final days, inshallah ta'ala. Just to give you a, a recap of what we've discussed already, we discussed corruption in, in relation to the Holy Quran. And some of the aspects discussed were, number one, where Quran would be studied and people would become knowledgeable of the Holy Quran and it will make them and cause them to become arrogant when they will believe that no one knows more than them. Then the Holy Prophet Sallallahu spoke about the fact that there will come a nation of people who will recite the Holy Quran, who will call you towards the Holy Quran and will recite the Quran most beautifully but the reality and the message of the Holy Quran and the implication of the Holy Quran will not even go down their throats and the Prophet of Allah said they are out of the fold of Islam then the Holy Prophet ﷺ spoke about the fact that, that the Quran will be opened and will become easily accessible for people and children, Muslim, non-Muslim, all of them will be engaged in critically analyzing the Holy Quran and giving their own interpretations until it reaches such a stage when the Prophet ﷺ stated that knowledge will disappear. And how will that disappear is when people will stop practicing the Holy Quran and practicing and following their own wombs and fancies and finally when the Holy Quran will be lifted to a point when in Sunnah Darim we said even the, the, the words from the Mus'haf will disappear and it will disappear from the hearts of people that is corruption in in connection with the Holy Quran then came corruption in, in relation to the Holy Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam that corruption being right in terms of the Holy Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam right a non-recognition of the legislative authority of the Holy Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam and also his religious authority and his spiritual authority as well as his political authority these are four dimensions of the relationship that the ummah that has with the holy prophet alayhi salatu wasalam and it is a sign of corruption in the ummah when all on all of these four levels whether it is the spiritual whether it is legislative whether it is the spiritual authority or the political authority of the holy prophet alayhi salatu wasalam will be openly questioned and not only will it be openly questioned but it will be rejected Today we come to the final discussion which is in two parts which is in terms of corruption in the Ummah and the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam spoke about corruption in his Ummah right in great detail to a point where in as Rahmatul Alameen he was overly concerned about corruption in his Ummah right and I'm going to discuss corruption in the Ummah on four levels one being spiritual corruption Second being moral corruption. The third being financial corruption. And the fourth being global corruption. Right? 
When we look at all of this in the context of the verse of the Holy Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you a clear indication as to why things happen. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Rum, ظَهَرَ الْفَسَادُ فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحَرِ Corruption and mischief and trials and tribulations have appeared on the land and in the oceans by virtue of what the hands of man has earned. And the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making you taste right, the evil of your own doings is so that they may taste the repercussions and they may understand the repercussions of their actions so that they may take admonition from it and they may return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in repentance. So it's not an adab from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is a mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he makes us aware and he, he makes us realize our shortcomings and how we've been we moved away from the path and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that so that you may taste the, the, the doings of your own actions and the repercussions of your own actions so, so that you will realize that it is not, not in your best interest to be, behave and to conduct your life except in accordance with the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam spoke about his fears and he articulated his fears about corruption in his ummah on various levels. Let me start off with the first one and this is narrated by Muhammad bin Labid radiallahu ta'ala who said the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said inna akhwafa ma akhafu alaykum ashirku al-khafi ashirku al-asrar the Prophet said, the thing that I fear most for you, for my ummah, is the minor shirk. So they said, Qalu Ya Rasulullah, ma shirkul asghar. What is the small shirk? What is the, you know, the small shirk, tiny shirk, or the hidden shirk? The Prophet said, ar In terms of moral corruption, the Holy Prophet stated that that which will destroy my ummah and that that shortcoming or that character flaw in my ummah that I fear most about is this character flaw and this disease of ostentation, Ria, showing off. Whether it is showing off in terms of your knowledge, whether it is ostentation in terms of your wealth, whether it is ostentation in terms of your power, in terms of your strength, or whatever it is there. And you do it with, with, you know, with, blatant, and, with blatant arrogance out there. And you go out there to gain the, 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 the pleasure of people, to gain the approval of people out there. And you spend your life pleasing others, right? And thereby pleasing yourself. And it gives you great satisfaction that people know you, people respect you, people you know, treat you with, with a great deal of dignity and honor by virtue of maybe your knowledge or by virtue of your, or your possessions or your wealth or your status in society or by your lineage or whatever it is. The Prophet said the day my ummah suffers from this disease of riya, which is shirkul asghar, he says that is that one quality that I fear most from my ummah because in terms of detection, if you, whether you have the spiritual disease or not, it is practically impossible. And the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the gist of the hadith is this. He said, you know, Riyah is like, is like a black ant on a black rock on a black night. You can't see it. Right? You are totally oblivious to the fact that you are engaged in ostentation or showing off. And these things are so subtle that it destroys your spiritual and moral fabric and you're not even aware of it. In another hadith of the Holy Prophet والسلام, narrated by Ka'ab bin Malik al-Ansari from his father, he said the Prophet وسلم, stated, he said, مَا ذِئْبَان جَائِعَان أُرْسِلَا فِي غَنَمٍ بِأَفْسَدَ لَهَا مِنْ حِرْسِ الْمَرْئِ عَلَى الْمَالِ وَالشَّرَفِ لِدِينِ You know, this we must write out somewhere you know, and leave it in our masajid. The Prophet وسلم, stated, he, said, he said, two starving wolves let loose upon a flock of sheep cause less destruction than the spiritual destruction that is caused by a man's desire and greed for wealth and honor in his religion. Sure. Look at, look at the analogy that the Holy Prophet ﷺ gave. Look at the imagery. He says, two hungry, rapacious wolves let loose upon a flock of sheep, flock of sheep will cause less destruction to a man Right? Then the destruction that is caused by a man's own greed and desire for number one, wealth. And number two, was sharafi dini and honor in his religion. Really, wallahi, Sadaqah Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it's become a disease nowadays. 
right? And one of the greatest uh, you know, symbols of achievement, one of the greatest status symbols in this day and age is a combination of the both. Really, it's a combination of the both. When people, you know, well, they've arrived. They've achieved what they, what they, whatever they needed to achieve in terms of material wealth and status and position in communities and whatever it is there. And the ultimate status symbol today is when you are recognized in spite of your wealth and besides your wealth and over and above your wealth, you are recognized for your spiritual position. Look how pious the man is. Look how what a philanthropist the man is. Right? Look how actively engaged he is and involved he is in community activities and in social upliftment and all of these things and whatever it is there. People crave this. People who are, you know, who are, who are craving power. They look for power in all places. And in this day and age, it's become the ultimate status symbol in the Muslim community. That if you've earned the money, if you've earned the wealth, if you have the social status and a financial position you know, that makes you very comfortable there, then the highest ultimate status symbol is, or if you become a trustee of a masjid or a very well-known institution there, or you head up and you chair all of these sessions and whatever, you know, all these major organizations and so on there, and you're actively involved in the media, doing this, doing that, there, fundraising. People love it. People love it. Have you ever seen a poor person as a chairperson of a, of a religious organization or a charitable organization? <laughs> have you seen it? Why? Why? They don't have capacity, they don't have abilities, they're not qualified enough? Really? And the Prophet made it very clear that these will be some of the causes. I'm not going to go into you know, the moral corruption on its own, is a lecture on itself. But the Holy Prophet said, These are the things that I fear most from my ummah. That this will destroy them and it is connected to Riyadh, ostentation showing off. And, you know, and the, uh, just for your benefit, right? the, the worst type of example of ostentation is, is ostentation garbed in humility. Ostentation in the garb of humility. No, alhamdulillah. No, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. But you're lapping it up. <laughs> and if you don't get it, Somehow or the other, you will make a point of ensuring that the next time or immediately the matter is rectified. Okay? That is in terms of moral corruption, or what we call spiritual corruption. In terms of moral corruption, and this is something which is very, very uh, uh, you know, predominant in our community nowadays. The Holy Prophet says, He said, He said, Inna ma akhwafa alaykum, uh, min, um, alaykum li ummati. He said, Amalu qawmi lutin. He said, that which I fear most from my ummah in terms of their moral corruption is that my ummah will also degenerate into such degrees of sexual um, promiscuity that they will also engage in the actions of the people of Lut alayhi salatu salam. In terms of homosexuality, LGBT, you know you understand? This is what the Holy Prophet sallallahu said. He said, in terms of moral corruption, this is what I fear most from my ummah. And in this modern era, right, in this era of, of, of what we would call um, liberal modernity, where this has become not the exception, but has literally become the rule, and we have this cultural hegemony of accepting all of this. In a secular society, this is not an Islamic country. In a secular society, the laws tell you you can get married uh, to people of the, of the same sex and whatever it is, and so on, well and good. But that doesn't take us away from the reality that from a, speech, from a religious and a spiritual perspective, this has been clearly forbidden by Allah, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And in this era of liberal modernity, Besides media and besides uh, whatever you, you are exposed to, it has become now a tendency, and I've been noticing this there. Within the Muslim community, people are going out there to ensure that to, to, in, or, to, uh, in order for them to become more politically correct. What happens is they dilute the enormity of this sin. Remember, adultery between male and female, or male and male, or female and female, regardless, is adultery. And in Islamic law, in terms of penal law, it is punishable. It's a punishable offense. And it carries the highest punishment possible. Pat khatam. Pat khatam. There's no issues on this one here. We respect the constitution of this country. We respect the constitution of the United States of America. Good luck to them. But in terms of Allah's law, this is Allah's law. And there's no need for us to pussyfoot around it and go on here and go on there. Oh, then you get the issues of, you know what, you discriminate against people and this and that. And it carries on. But, but you believe in what you believe in. And the Prophet ﷺ clarified this. 
Today, we have, we have a movement out there that is actively engaging and saying, look here, you know what, oh, in terms of the laws, in terms of sodomy, in terms of the laws of this one here, and so on, they, and they're trying to normalize the situation in the Muslim community to a point where, you know what, accept this whole thing. Don't regard it as a crime. Don't regard it as a, as a punishable offense in Islam. Don't, uh, don't display your moral abhorrence to this type of behavior. That is what is becoming. No, no, accept everybody. You know, it's fine. Right? Now masajid are being opened up so that we don't discriminate against people. Really? You got to take a stand. And the Prophet of Allah said, this is what I fear most from my ummah. This type of moral corruption. Really, you see people, you know, going out there and reinterpreting verses and you must see some of the justification that come out from it. And today to talk about these things, yeah, it's taboo. How can you say that? How can you say this? You're an extremist, you're a fundamentalist, you need to be a little bit more liberal. So what next? When Richard Dawkins gets his way and he proves to the whole world that, that we've originated from the apes and then they legitimize marrying apes and say, you know what, we need to bridge the gap so that we you know bridge the evolution gap so that eventually monkeys will become humans and humans will become monkeys. Then you must say, no, 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 look, this is the way of the world now. We might as well accept it. It's part of our constitution. G I'm just giving you an idea. Really, it's creeping up in our ummah like you can't believe. Then comes the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam discussion in terms of financial corruption, and this is very, very interesting. The Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa wasallam stated, he says, he said, "Inna li kulli ummatin fitna, wa fitna tu ummati al mal." He said, "For every nation, there is a fitna, there is a tribulation, there is a trial." And the fitna and the trials and the tribulation and the test for my ummah is the tribulation of wealth. If anything has destroyed the Muslim community out there, it's our excessive desire for wealth and our excessive greed to own as much as we can there without giving out and living our lifestyle the way Allah and His Prophet وسلم, had ordained for us. And the Holy Prophet وسلم, stated, he said, it's a muttafaq alayhi hadith of Sahih Bukhari and Muslim. He said, he said, Wallahi lal faqra akhsha alaykum. The Prophet of Allah said, I swear by Allah that I do not fear poverty for my ummah. He said, I do not fear Poverty for my ummah. Poverty, even if my ummah is going hungry, even if things are tough, times are bad. He said, that's not what I fear for my ummah. He said, لا الفقر, لا الفقر أخشى عليكم ولكن أخشى عليكم أن تبسط عليكم الدنيا. But what I fear most for you is that the world, and you'll be given the wealth of the world. See what the impact of not being able to effectively control and utilize the amount of wealth will be, it will create this degree of corruption, moral and spiritual corruption in us there, that will become en enemies of one another. Right. That is the financial corruption. Now coming to the interesting ones. The Holy Prophet then spoke about global corruption. Now listen to this very carefully because you will see how the Holy Prophet you know, he, he read us like a book and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has informed me about every disease that will affect us. The Prophet وسلم, says these are all sahih ahadith. No weak hadith is here to say no, no, you know, it's not. The Prophet of Allah sallallahu wasallam stated there, he said, so you see ummati da'ul umam. He said, my ummah will be afflicted by the diseases of the former nations. The former nations. What are the diseases of the former nations? So they said, Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Man da'ul umam, da'ul umam. What are the diseases of the nations? The Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said it. He said, number one, al-ashar, excessive amusement, entertainment. This is what my ummah will be affected by. This disease my ummah will be affected by. Excessive amusement, entertainment. Self-explanatory. Then he said, Al-Ashar wal Batar. And he said, Ingratitude. Ingratitude. And then he said, Wat Tanafus. And he said, Disunity. Wat Tanafusu fi dunya. And competition with each other for worldly gain. And then the Holy Prophet said, to, When you reach that point when you will be competing with one another for the worldly gain, what will happen? It will bring, lead to Wat Tabahud. Hatred. Hatred. Wal Bukhul. And greed. He said, until hatta yakun al baghyu thumma yakun al harj. Until what will happen? There will be transgression followed by upheaval. Followed by upheaval. He said, this will destroy the ummah. So it will start off slowly but surely. But eventually it will reach such a stage when there will be dissension, disunity, 
killings, murder, hajj. One word for hajj means killings and upheaval. And this is what will happen. Now, listen to this hadith of the Holy Prophet ﷺ. He's giving you signs of the, of, the, of the final days. And he's giving you what are the causes of corruption and, the, and the, you know, the total destruction of our ummah, which we ourselves will be held responsible for. The Holy Prophet ﷺ, this is narrated in Sunan Ibn Majah. And it's a Sahih hadith as well. Sunan Ibn Majah, the Holy Prophet ﷺ addressed the muhajirun. The people of Madi, the, the, the Muhajirun were the people of Mecca who came to Medina. He said, Ya Ma'ashal Muhajirin. He said, There are five things with which you will be tested. And I seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you will live to see them. What did the Prophet of Allah say? He said, I am concerned about my Muhajirun. He's speaking to the Muhajirun. And he said, that There are five trials that I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you don't see them, that you don't live to see them. The Prophet said, said to the Muhajirun, he said, I fear this most for my ummah. And I pray and I seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for my Muhajirun that they do not live to see this. What are these? The Prophet stated, he said, promiscuity never becomes widespread amongst people except that they will be afflicted by plagues and diseases that were unknown to their forefathers. When promiscuity, when adultery, when sodomy, homosexuality, you call it whatever you want to, becomes that disease, the Muslim Ummah is affected by this disease here, then there are symptoms of that disease. And there are outcomes and effects of the disease. And what is that there? The Prophet ﷺ stated that there will be diseases and plagues that will afflict you that your forefathers were never afflicted by. One. Then the Holy Prophet stated, they do not cheat in weights and measures, engaging in fraud, economic fraud, corruption, economic corruption, except that they will be stricken with famine, calamity, and oppression of rulers. Look how serious fraud is in the sight of Allah and His beloved Sallallahu He told you about promiscuity that you are affected by plagues and diseases. Here he's telling you three results of people engaging in econo mass economic fraud. And the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is telling you that you will, be, uh, you will be tested with famine, calamity, and oppressive rulers. Particularly when the or oppressive rulers themselves are corrupt. <laughs> That's the state of our nation. One word, no two hour bayan, corruption. Bad khatam. Okay? Then the Holy Prophet وسلم, said to the third thing. He said, They do not withhold charity from their wealth, except rain will be withheld from the sky. And wait for not were it not for the animals, there would be no rain at all. <coughs> Zakat wa amwali. In recent years, just for your information, there, our ulama have been actively involved in educating our businesses out there that dead stock, useless stock, right, can't be given away as zakat. You're giving two left shoes. Really. You're giving clothes there that have been so destroyed through rain or whatever, right? And you're giving it away as zakat. Really? Really? The Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is telling us here that the moment we withhold our zakah, the moment we withhold our charity, the Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala as a cosmic consequence will withhold rain from the sky and had it not been for the animals, there'd be no rain at all. Blame it as much as you want on Al Nino and whoever else you want to blame it on. But Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is giving you a spiritual and a cosmic consequence of our ill deeds. Then the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that the fourth one is they do not break their covenant with Allah and His Messenger that except that Allah will enable their enemies to overpower them and take what is in their hands. Meaning that the, their country's wealth will be taken away from them. The power and the authority that they have will be taken away from them because they committed treason with Allah and his beloved Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Wallah, if you look at all the Muslim, so-called Muslim countries there, they broke their covenant with Allah and his Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Even if they are not, they are still in power, ostensibly in power, like the Saudis and the Emiratis and the Kuwaitis and so on there. Who's controlling all of what they had in their hands? Who dictates the prices? Who tells them how to spend their wealth and where to spend their wealth? and where to, to deposit their wealth, who? 
Saudi Arabia is Saudi America. Really, it's Saudi America. I don't know, it's the 52nd, 50, 52 states. I think it's the 53rd state. Yeah. If it's 50, I can't remember exactly, but anyway, forgive me. For, really? And this is what the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stated. They call themselves, they, they rule the country. What? Islamic law. <laughs> Islamic law. You're breaking the covenant of Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Right. Then the Holy Prophet gave the fifth answer and said that their leaders must rule according to the book of Allah and seek every good from what Allah has revealed or else Allah will cause them to fight with one another. Allah. Whether you look at it from a political perspective, whether you look at it from a religious perspective, whether you look at it from any perspective whatsoever, this is exactly what it is. They must rule by the book of Allah. Today, we don't want to rule by the book of Allah. We want to embrace secular democracy in Muslim countries. We want to, exp uh, we want to embrace all of the political systems out there and economic systems out there right? and every other social system out there which is contrary to the book of Allah and the teachings of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the cause, what is the result of it? He'll cause you to fight with one another. Show me where there isn't a power struggle. If you are not aware, there are major power struggles right now within the house of Saud. There are major power struggles right now within the, the, the Emiratis and the Kuwaitis and the Qataris. And they are fighting between themselves, but they, they, they keep it under wraps. And this is what is happening in our Ummah. And the Holy Prophet وسلم, clarified all of these matters. Wallah, if you just remember one or two of what I told you, right, you'll come to realize how the Holy Prophet وسلم, he clarified everything that with the knowledge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had guarded, uh, granted him. And this is where we are at right now. But I can't tell you it's going to get any better. Right? Next week, inshallah ta'ala, we'll be covering the corruption in the ummah, particularly those signs in terms of tribulations and trials of the final days. And really, again, Sadaqah Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you'll be shocked as to how explicitly the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam right, exposed the final days scenarios. When you say, phew, he is Sadiq al-Wa'dul Ameen, undoubtedly. Allah gives us the tawfiq and he die, inshallah.